Welcome to the Electrical and Electronic Engineering Lecture Series. Your anchor person is Professor Michael C. Ndinechi. Our topic today is Sustainable 21st Century Learning Skills for Engineering Students, Part 3. Follow us, subscribe to our channel at HTTPC slash youtube.com slash at Michael C to listen to our lecture series. Please subscribe, share, and like. You can listen to part one of this topic by clicking on the link shown. You can also listen to part two of this link by clicking on this other link. This will help you to understand and follow in this part 3. In the part 1 and 2, we looked at some core enablers that will help students in their 21st century learning skills. Today, we are going to look at the final enabler, which is the technology scales. By technology scales, we mean those abilities that help students to interact with the digital world around them. Being technologically scaled refers to proficiency in digital or technical media. This is, a, this is critical to both job success and for one to be relevant in the digital society. Such skills include, but are not limited to being able to search for materials online, using emails or other instant messaging tools, using private network platforms, and knowledge of digital financial services. It is important to note that millions of emerging openings in jobs in the digital economy era we require far more advanced skills than mentioned in the part one and part two of this model. It is therefore expected that substantial talent gaps may emerge between workers proficient with ICT and those lacking ICT skills in the near future. Therefore, one must not fall out of step in the quest to acquire technological skills in the 21st century. So what are the tools you need to be relevant in 21st century learning? If you look at the picture here, you see a box. That is the toolbox. And inside that toolbox, you see so many ICT tools. For instance, you are seeing a Google Meet, Gmail, Google Doc, Google Reader, or to Google Account. You see your browser, Firefox, Chrome. You see Dropbox, Microsoft Teams, Edmodo, Zoom, Skype, YouTube. You must be able to know, if not all, of all how these tools work to be able to be relevant in your 21st century study. What are the objectives of using these ICT tools? See, as a student, either undergraduate or postgraduate student, you must at one point in time or the other be engaged in research. So, if you look to the left, you see, for you to start any research, you must have to identify a research area. If you identify that research area, you have to now design your research study. After you're designing your research study, you carry out the research proper. Then you analyze your research results after that, you publish your work and go back to identify gap that you have not taken care of in your research 
you repeat the cycle. That is what you have on the left hand side. Now, as you do that, on the right hand side, it has to go through phases. As you go through that phases, um, you need some tools to do that. So, on that right hand side, you see phase one of what you are going to do. You are going to collect data on what you want to do. After collecting the data, you have to do some authoring, do some literature search, then you move to phase three, you have to do your publication and disseminate the information. And four, you have to do archiving, you have to do presentation, you make, have to make sure that the work is stored. Now, <clears throat> as you work with these ICT tools, most of the tools will be online, some will be offline. But for online tools, there are advantages and disadvantages. For instance, when you are making use of online web tools, you have the following advantage. It's available to you any place, so you can move about to do your research. It is there, instant sharing and dialogue at any time. You have variety of supports. You have easy of use and deployment. Learners can actively be involved in knowledge building. You have immediate feedback and it can create dynamic learning communities. But the disadvantages include risk of quality issues because they are free nature and lack of control over content. So you may not have the quality you want. You have time differences may create issues in terms of collaboration with others from various locations. The necessity of compatible system to enhance operations. In some cases, you must have to obtain license to use them. So we say licensing issues may affect continuity and some requires specialized skills to cope. So if you are now going into research and you are doing the pre-data analysis, that is literature search, you must have knowledge of the following to be able to do your work very well. One is you must know how to make use of Mendeley. You must you know, make use of Microsoft Academic Search, things like IEEE Explore, Taylor and Francis, Wiley Online Library, ASME Reviews, ACBI Journal Finders, EndNote Mart, Publish or Flourish Open Access, Springer Journal Suggestors, Web of Science Master List. And so on. So now, if you are doing data analysis proper, you may have to, you know, make use of one of these statistical analysis things like using MATLAB, Simulink, MS Excel, graph pad, statistical analysis software, statistical package for social sciences (SPSS). If you are doing some designs, you may have to need 3D model segmentation, character mesh for animation, image to 3D, MS Visual Package, etc. So if you are into engineering, you may have to go for computer aided design tools. For instance, you can use the ArchiCAD, AutoCAD, if you are into building or architectural applications, if you are into electronic and communications engineering, you may have to need Altium Designer, Ego, KiCad, Simulink, Riverbed Modeler, Packet Tracer. So you have to be conversant with some of these to be relevant. So if you are now doing 
post-data analysis, that is, you're going to present your work to the public. You have to know how to do your referencing properly by using Mendeley. You have to do some plagiarism checks. There are softwares available, Turnitin, Grammarly, and Identicate. You have to do storage. You have to look for repositories like ResearchGate, Google Scholar, Space, and many other cloud storage devices available. You must do your presentation and ways of communicating these ideas is very important. So you must be able to know at least something like ML PowerPoint to be able to do that effectively. So there are also tools that are available for this presentation. So tools like Canva, Infoground, Visme, Adobe Spark, FreePeak, PeakMonkey, Infographify, Snapper. So you must get to know some of these things. They will help you in your 21st century learning scale. So after that, you publish your work. So if you are publishing your work, you must look for a comfortable and the right journal for your work. So you must be able to make use of Elsevier Journal Finder, EndNote Match, um, Journal Autumn Name Estimator, Springer, IEEE Publication Recommender, Web of Science List, all this will help you to publish your work. So many challenges. These challenges may come as a result of one, depth of teaching strategies to be applied to teach and reach all learners. Two, inability to implement technology. Three, inability to foster student relationships for no forward thinking. Five, inability to embrace change. Six, mastery of various disciplines. And seven, inability to meet the needs of students. So how do we overcome these challenges? We must make these challenges lighter by one, developing interest commitment and determination to grooming teachers in the use of effective strategies for teaching and reaching all learners. Three, implement technology in the classrooms. Four, fostering students' relationships. Five, being forward thinkers. And six, endeavor to embrace change. Seven, master various technologies like we have mentioned above and eight mastery of 21st century skills for enablers listed in part one and part two of this model as listed in slides in slide number two where we have shown the links to take us to where we can see the first part. In conclusion, therefore, we say that with first century learning skills involve preparing students for jobs and technologies that do not even exist yet. Very important because we are looking at the future. That is from time for, for them to be able to solve problems that we do not even know are going to be problems by this, we mean that lecturers must be able to get students to imbibe these 21st century skills. It will help them both as students and their life after the university. Students must imbibe the most of these skills they will be well on their way to becoming great collaborators inside and outside the classroom. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe.
and drop your comments in the comment section.